RSA is just one of the two algorithms you can use to create digital signatures. Let's talk about how that works. The process to create a signature with RSA takes advantage of RSA's ability to encrypt and decrypt in either direction. Earlier in the series, when we were talking about asymmetric encryption and RSA, I showed you an illustration that looks like this. I told you that RSA can take a value, the public key, and use that value to encrypt some playtext to turn it into some ciphertext. Then the correlating private key can be used to take that same ciphertext and turn it back into the plaintext. But at the end of that lesson, I told you that it also works in the other direction, which means you can take the value known as the private key and use it in RSA encryption to create some ciphertext. And then you can take the correlating public key to turn that ciphertext back into the same plaintext. That feature is what RSA takes advantage of in order to create a signature. Here's how the process works. It all starts with some sort of data that needs to be signed. As we mentioned in the last lesson, the data can be a bunch of different things. For the sake of this illustration, just consider this data to be some sort of set of ones and zeros. And to create a signature on this data, the first thing RSA is going to do is run that data through some sort of hashing algorithm. That's going to create a digest. Then, that digest will be encrypted using the RSA private key. That's what will actually create the signature. This hashing step is very important. Remember I told you earlier that RSA signatures is computationally expensive. Imagine if your data was a super large file. Well, you can't expect to do the math on gigabytes and terabytes worth of data. But if you can run that through a hashing algorithm, that'll turn any file of any size into a smaller representational value. And then it's much more feasible to do the complex math of RSA signatures on that smaller value. So after you create the signature, you can then attach that signature to the data and include it wherever that data goes, whether that be sending that data across the wire or simply including it in the metadata of the file itself on a hard drive. So that's the process to generate a signature. Now let's talk about how you would verify the signature. The signature verification process looks like this. You would take the data in the signature and separate them out. Then you would take that data and run it through the same hashing algorithm that was used earlier when we created the signature. That's going to produce some sort of digest. Then you take the signature value and decrypt it using the RSA public key that matches the private key that did the encryption. And then you simply compare these two results. If these digests match, this tells you that this data has not changed since the signature was created and therefore the signature is verified. That is the process that RSA uses to verify a signature. So that wraps up our lesson on RSA signatures. The main takeaways are understanding how RSA creates a signature and how RSA verifies a signature. In the next lesson, we're gonna be looking at DSA, which is a different algorithm that can also do signatures. But that's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.